Hey, what's going on everybody? Uh, Brian here for Ginger Prime, and if you're a returning subscriber, what's up Soul Nation? Thanks for coming and checking out this video. I don't want to waste anyone's time, we've got a lot of information we need to dive in, but if this video doesn't cover it for you, sound off in the comments below, let me know if you have any questions and I'll do my best to answer them for you about Genshin Impact. So, let's go ahead and dive in. If you guys aren't aware, the official release date is September 28th, 2020. It's coming for PC, PS4, iOS, and Android. The game supports full cross-play, but from a cross-save perspective, just note PC, iOS, and Android, that's where cross-save is enabled. PS4 is not going to support cross-save. So you'll have to actually progress on two different ways if you decide to be a PS4 and a PC player. But you still can play together. So just note, if you're going to set up shop on the PS4, that's where you're really going to want to play. So anyway, you now know. Let's go ahead and dive in. Anyway, regarding the release time of the game, it's going to be September 28th at 10 a.m. UTC time, which roughly translates to 9 p.m. the 27th for people like me in Texas or if you're in the central time zone. If you're not, if you're in a different time zone, you can do some math and figure out exactly when the servers go live for you. So it's not that far away. But anyway, what kind of game is, what type of game is this for Genshin Impact? Well, it's an action RPG with a cooperative mode. You're gonna look at this and you might immediately assume like Legend of Zelda, it has this big open world, very beautiful painted art style. You're also gonna look at this and maybe think MMO because it's got some of those elements, especially as it kind of relates to gotcha. Just note that it's kind of a blend of both, but it is not an MMORPG and it is not The Legend of Zelda. Now, does Genshin Impact have multiplayer functionality? Yes, it does, up to four players. And this is kind of where things get a little bit twisted and a little bit different. Note that if you're a guest player, you're not gonna progress your own story. You're basically just kind of helping your friend out. They're gonna make progress in their world. We're gonna get into more details about how that works here in a little bit. Can you actually play this game offline? No, at this time, this is an online, always online game. So that could be kind of a deal breaker for some people. So just note that right away. Now, what platforms? We already covered that. That's gonna be PlayStation, PC, Nintendo Switch actually is coming but we do not have a release date for the Switch just yet. Google, Android, and Apple iOS. We're gonna dive into the smartphone requirements, the PC requirements here in just a little bit. Now this is a personal favorite of mine, something I was actually kind of concerned about. Is this game playable with a controller, especially on the PC version? And yes, it actually has official controller support for both the PS4 and Xbox. And I hear that you can even somewhat use a controller on iOS and Android, but note that is not fully confirmed just yet. That might be coming in the future, but it seems like because it already supports a controller, that might be a natural extension to us. And also for PlayStation players, you wanna know if uh, PS Plus is required to play? And no, Genshin Impact does not require PS Plus to play on PlayStation. So how many characters are actually gonna be available to play? And it launched around pretty much tying in with their announcement, there's gonna be 30 playable characters and more will be added in the future. And as far as what languages are gonna be supported, the official dub will include Chinese, Japanese, Korean, and English. And the official subtitles will include Chinese, English, French, German, Indonesian, Korean, Portuguese, Russian, Spanish, Thai, and Vietnamese. There's also an official Discord server, which I'll include a link in the description of this video if you wanna go check that out. Okay, so at this time, I wanna dive into more details about the gotcha system and the stanima system and give you that information so you can decide if this is gonna be for you. We still have a couple other questions, real key indicators uh, that we need to cover in this video, but I think this is a perfect time to kind of have that conversation. So the reason this game is free is because it is a gotcha. It means it's got premium currencies, MTXs, and things like that. So even on PS4, even if you order uh, the pre-order bundle, which is optional, you're gonna have this gotcha system. It's always going to exist like that. So characters, weapons, there's gonna be things that are locked behind that gotcha system that are only attainable with picto gems. This is the premium currency. And they also use fate items, which are used to actually pull from gotcha. So you can earn the gotcha items from just playing the game, but note it's gonna be random. It's not gonna be 100%. It's gonna try to keep you coming back for more, always kind of keeping you on that line. If you're disciplined gotcha games can be perfectly fine and fun and you're not going to have issues however there's always horror stories of players out there who spend thousands and thousands of dollars trying to obtain this one thing that they're after so just be careful guard your wallet i wouldn't hook your credit card up to your phone if at all possible especially if you're a parent out there don't have your credit card hooked up to these slot machines but just note that it can be completely fine as long as you are very aware of what you're about to get into 
And as far as additional ways that they're planning on monetizing this game, you've got the Picto Gems that we just covered, monthly cards, battle passes, and various cosmetic items that will be added and available for purchase. So the also this game supports a Stanima system, and this could be a major turnoff for mo most players, but just note the Stanima isn't tied into actually playing the game, it's tied into the looting of the game itself. So as in many other mobile and gacha games, the Stanima system is in place to limit how many times you can actually collect drops, loot items from bosses and dungeons and more. It does not limit the content that you can play or clear, but once you have cleared it, you're actually not gonna be able to get those drops until your Stanima is replenished or you use items to refill it. Now they're gonna give you plenty of those items for free, but I bet as you play and further into the game, you're gonna find a uh, kind of a uh, an incentive to spend money uh, to be able to play the, uh, some more of the game. Now, since this is an open world game and you have no Stanima left, it's not as limiting as other games because the content isn't locked behind the gameplay. It's the loot drops in this case. So they refer to Stanima as reason. Uh, the term Stanima is actually used for sprinting, climbing, and swimming in the game itself. So note there are two different systems. We're using the term Stanima because that is the official free-to-play mindset behind these games that is actually resin stanima is going to allow you to actually have gameplay so now that we've had that fun and yet awkward conversation as it relates to a gotcha game let's talk about the gameplay itself single player multiplayer and map size so for the map itself it's reported to be 20 to 30 square kilometers which roughly rates to kind of two regions in the game itself now they plan to have seven at the, some point in the future so note that this game is going to be growing in size. We don't as to know the pacing of this growth, but we'll be sure to update you as we continue to play it. Regarding the single player and multiplayer, I want to dive into this a little bit more. So Genshin Impact is mainly a single player game. It is not an MMORPG. Just note, you might get that vibe from some videos. Uh, you might get that vibe when you take a look at it, but it is primarily a single player action RPG. The co-op system does exist and you can invite a friend, in this case cross-play as well, or a random person from any kind of list to join your world. Now once you do, you can actually party up with four players in total in your party and you can explore the world as the host player or if you're a guest, you're exploring the world of the host that invited you. During this time, all progress made will only affect the host world. So once you return your, to your home world, the progress will actually not carry over. There are some exceptions, to this list and we're going to cover those here in a minute but note that it is also possible to actually co-op in dungeons via the automated matchmaking system so you can actually play whether solo or uh, with others and also others via matchmaking now what can you do in co-op you can do daily commissions so note that even though this is kind of primarily a single player game it is bringing in a lot of concepts of mmos daily commissions those are daily little quests domains or aka your dungeons you can hunt world bosses and loot can be picked up by the host only. Unlocking hidden chests that actually require two people to trigger, you can do that together and you can gather resources from a different world and there's also special co-op events. Now things you cannot do as a co-op visitor in the other world. You can't do the main story, abyss, opening chests, looting from bosses and collecting different collectibles, etc. So I think that brings us to kind of the idea of the system requirements. Now, PlayStation 4 should be pretty straightforward. Just make sure you've got 30 gigabytes of space available. Regarding PC, let's talk about our minimum configuration and our recommended. Minimum, they want an operating system on Windows 7, 64-bit, Windows 8, 64-bit, Windows 10, 64-bit processor, Intel Core i5 or equivalent, 8 gigs of RAM, NVIDIA GT. 1030 or higher DirectX version 11 and they want 30 gigabytes of space as well now they're recommended they want to see uh, obviously the operating system 64-bit i7 equivalent or higher 16 gigs of RAM uh, and Intel GTX uh, 1060 6 gigabytes and higher with DirectX 11 now for Android they recommend the Snapdragon 845 the current 810 at least 4 gigs of RAM and above and Android 8.1, but supported, you can actually go down to Android 7, uh, and they want at least eight gigabytes of space on your phone, and they could also do three gigs. So it's kind of, it does support, you know, a little different specs there, but just note that you're gonna wanna have the Premier experience with at least four gigs of RAM and, and the Snapdragon. Now for iOS, supported recommended devices, you're gonna be looking at iOS, a, uh, iPhone 8 Plus, 
and above. And regarding iPad, you're gonna be looking at the iPad mini fifth generation, iPad Air third generation uh, devices, and later regarding iPad Pro, you're gonna be looking at the iPad Pro for the second generation and above. So just note that there's a lot of different configurations that were supported for iOS, and if you have those, then you should be fine to run this game. Also, just as a final note, uh, FPS cap and ultra wide support is supported on PC. Uh, they have FPS that was capped at 120 during closed beta 2, 60 during closed beta 3, but we pretty much assume that we're going to see that uncapped or at least at set at 120 frames per second at their full release at the beginning of this game. So we've covered a lot of information in this guide. Hopefully some of this has been help. If there's any questions that I didn't get to, please let me know in the comments below or check the description below for a varying collection of frequently asked questions and guides that put up by Reddit, fan sites, and more. So there's a lot of information to cover. And honestly, I'm really excited to go hands-on with a game here on the 28th. Guys, I love you. I love your faces. Thanks for checking out this video. If you feel like it's earned it, be sure to hit that like button. If you feel like coming back for more videos, be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And let me know if you do so I can officially welcome you to the Soul Nation. Anyway, for Ginger Prime, my name is Brian. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a fantastic day and I'll see you soon. Take care. This video is sponsored by me, Ginger Prime. Hopefully you'll check out my podcast channel, Ginger Gaming Radio, which we have lots of guests, lots of great conversations, and even more highlights. Links are in the description below. Let me know what you think. Thanks.